And then again, once more, a warm welcome to our second AMA call with Yoop on appreciative inquiry and appreciative leadership. And um, yeah, this is a series. So we already had our first one, which was wonderful. And uh, there's going to come more. Um, what you can expect today, I guess Yoop is first going to share a tiny, weeny little bit about why he's so extremely excited. Um, or maybe you, you can do that after people go into breakout sessions to just warm up and share the, start with sharing that story. So in the breakout sessions, you have um, the possibility to check in with one or two other people uh, sharing who you are and what brought you here and uh, what is your burning question to you about appreciative inquiry, leadership or any other topic where you would like to access Yoop's wisdom. Then we start the AMA call, uh, the AMA part, so the ask me anything part where you can ask all these questions. And then there's a little bit of um, this and that before the end. And then we'll check out at seven o'clock roundabout, sharply, more or less. But uh, if there are more burning questions, you can stay in for longer. So this is what we're going to do. Are there any burning questions to this procedure before I send you into the breakout rooms? All right, then I have to create, and meanwhile, some breakout sessions. Um, and here we go. That's wonderful. Yup, you're gonna be in one breakout session as well. Have fun. Hello. And uh, with that, I would love to give the floor, floor first to you to kind of uh, release us from the tension around your excitement. <laughs> and then I'm, of course, really, really curious to hear the questions that you have brought to this Ask Me Anything call. And you, you first have to unmute yourself in order to share. One of the things I really struggle with still. Um, it, the excitement is that I, I was, um, I received a message from Anne Redford. Um, Anne Redford is, is, you could, I think actually it's fair to say that she is the one who brought together with Walt Hopkins Appreciative Inquiry to Europe. Um, Anne is now in her mid 70s and she is also the founder of the AI Practitioner, is a magazine that's been published for a long time. And she um, stopped, more or less, she stopped her consultancy practice. They've been working for major corporations um, for, for many decades. And, and um, for about 10 years now, she has been writing about appreciative inquiry as walking the way. No, well, not about appreciative inquiry. I, that, that's wrong. I'm saying I rephrase that. She has been writing for the past 10 years about walking the way. And walking the way is uh, how she sees her, her life story unfold. And it's, uh, and, and she does so in a beautiful way. And today we have been, I've been talking to her. It's now the part three, as she called part three of walking away. And I spend a fair amount of time this afternoon reading this part. And um, what, what, what excites me and also, I guess it also makes me feel humble is, um, is how she writes about the role others have played in her life, but not only the others, but also the concepts of ancestors. And in this part three, she wrote about how appreciative inquiry is now looked upon her by, by her as, um, as a gift 
to 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 this notion of appreciating whatever happens, uh, whether that's health-wise, or whether um, that's what's happening relation-wise. Um, so it is also about the tears and the sorrow, which which are often, I guess, kind of ignored in appreciative inquiry. We we think of when we talk about appreciation that it's something that we should like or 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 um feel like a gift but it's actually she talks about appreciative inquiry in this part three as a gift but it's a it's it is appreciating everything also the not knowing um and the way she does this and and the profoundness i really touch me and excites me as well i mean this is um i, I shared that Many times when I speak about appreciative inquiry, you can look at, at it as a methodology. Um, you can look at it from the perspective of the principles. Uh, but I've always been intrigued by what happens if you, if you start to live um, an appreciative life, what that then means. Um, and as I said, so often in our, in particularly our Western society, we um, we think about appreciative appreciative and appreciating of the good things that come our way, but what happens if if um, if if things that we feel slightly uncomfortable with come our way? And I moved onto my boat. So for those who you know, I, I live on a on a sailboat. And um, yesterday we had the first summer storm here in the Netherlands. Actually, there another one is coming up. And um, and trying to appreciate the storm is a different thing when you're on board of a boat. Uh, and Anne's words, um, to slow down, to be really in, in the moment, um, is, is I, th I thought was really profound and I love that. And I love her talking. So it, it will probably take me another week or two weeks to really fully understand um, but but um, I guess it, it it makes my appreciation for appreciative inquiry even bigger because it takes it to a next level and it and and I've always made the case that it's that it is a lot about a life that you live and, and, and your personal life but also as a leader um, and and. And, and then it really makes a difference, I think. So Vera, that's what I... Thank you. Beautiful. And uh, Ritu was actually kind of on the, uh, waving along with you, you could say, and uh, shared on, in the chat, I have found appreciation as a process. So I guess that very much kind of, at least for me, goes along with what you've been just saying. So thanks for that insight. And um, with that, I would actually love to open the floor to anyone who has a question to you. I already heard two beautiful questions from Ritu, but I'm sure there are maybe more. Um, and I would invite you in order to let that happen. Um, there is on, when you go with your cursor up above the screen where you have Zoom, then there is a line on the foot floor so on the lower part appearing and you have in the middle you have a smiley and there's reactions and when you go on click on that reactions there's like a, a sign of raising your hand and if you raise your hand um, then that makes really makes us makes it really easy for us to kind of see who was first in the line with the question so if you have a question uh, go for that and Ritu is right there so I would <laughs> <laughs> give the floor to Rito. So please go for it, dear Rito, and ask your question. And I'm going to pin you. Hi, everyone. I'm calling from Delhi. Mm. No. I couldn't help myself. I'm being very greedy. I raised my hand. And I thought, like, uh, not like learn from everybody. Um, uh, I My first very basic question is, what is appreciation? <laughs> Yeah, because I have, uh, I work with a constellation um, 
uh, it's registered in uh, in Belgium, and we've had so many conversations on this term, appreciation. And in SALT, SALT is an acronym, and A is for appreciation. So I would really love to like, go a bit deep. Um, is it too basic to ask this question? No, it's, it's, it's I guess... It, it is a, it's building a little bit on what I just shared, I think, read through yes. about. And I guess a, a appreciative an appreciation, I guess, and this is probably the heritage almost of the, the American look, uh, of way looking at things, is that um, it had to do quite a, a, a lot with the positive. And, and I have always said, that that might be, but it's certainly not the core. I think that to me, appreciating and appreciated is probably much closer to accepting. Accepting whatever is there. So whether it's the tears, whether it's the joy, whether it's the pain, whether it's the sadness or whether it's the love, uh, the pleasure. So appreciation and to appreciate is to accept everything that is there from, and this is where I guess it adds value to me or adds value. This is where appreciative inquiry maybe adds value. Yeah, why not? Um, is that as a, as a dear friend of mine uh, quite often says, there is learning and growth in everything. And a dear friend, by, by the way, being Vera, uh, who, who said, there is learning and growth in everything. And I think that in, in, even in the moments of, of sorrow and pain, um, is that there is this element of appreciating that it's there and that it is something that wants to tell you something. That, that is, I would say everything is there for a reason. Like I shared about the storm uh, last night, um, the, the storm that's coming. In a way, I don't have to like that. Uh, but when I can be still and slow down and not panic and, and, and try to learn what it's telling me, because there is something that it wants to tell me, whether it's my fear, uh, about my fear, whether it's about my anxiety, whether it's about my concern that nothing will break, um, maybe the concern that I will not drown or may drown, um, whatever is there. And, and to me, appreciation, and this is key to appreciative inquiry, is to accept everything that's there for every story. I mean, this is one of the key things I appreciative inquiry is about the storytelling and it's accepting everything that's there. Everything, even though it may not be this, the thing that, that our particularly Western society or maybe in general other societies like, like in India or, or elsewhere in the world is, um, is hoping or wishing for. So, to me, appreciation, as said, has a lot more to do with accepting. I mean, I was on board, the connection was not too good, um, and I decided to walk to the main building, and I'm now watching the gate, and motorcycles passing by, and overseeing the harbor. Um, I could have gotten upset and say, well, this is not to be appreciated. Um, it, it, it sort of asked me to say, well, okay, what, what actions can you take? And that was getting closer to the main building and, and, um, and just be here with you all and feel that as a gift. And so, so I don't know if that, if that evokes any reaction from you, Ritu, or from the others, because I think it, it is one of the key questions around appreciative inquiry. Thank you.
Yes, for me, um, um, we uh, we came to the same conclusion actually. When <laughs> we had the discussions on, yeah, it it's taken me a lot of time because I started from like what is the best and what are the strengths I see in the person, but I gradually realized I had to accept that person because I worked with with um, drug users i worked with sex workers um i was the coordinator of all india network of sex workers and my mother refused to tell people she would say she works with women but when i started appreciating and really accepting that sex worker i stopped judging i think um it's about non judgmental being non judgmental and then i asked myself a question i lost my dad at 59 years when he was 59 and uh, and then i thought okay what was the good thing about losing my dad and uh, that was the biggest lesson in appreciation so it's beautiful what you've said i've taken notes if anyone wants i can just paste them here <laughs> yeah there's a book by john louis lambore i'll put it here if anyone is interested uh, what makes us human uh, he talks about what you were saying as well so thank you so much i'm very grateful and i will not ask any more question until unless i have time i'll not i can't be so greedy but i really thank you really very very full of gratitude you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome yeah, too and i would maybe add as well that please i mean this is a room to ask any question that you have so <laughs> <laughs> please please uh please feel welcome to ask your question maybe if there is another question from another person first and i would give them the um the floor first but then i guess there will be room for you to ask another question if you want to and one more thing that i would love to add maybe or synthesize to what you just said in a way uh what came up for me is you know appreciation and this thing about acceptance and then you said like anything maybe wants to tell me something that's of course an assumption but a very in a way, healthy and inquiring assumption. So th I think the moment that we accept or appreciate what is in that moment, it gives us the room to go to the second part and the second component of appreciative inquiry, which is the inquiring part. Because if I cannot accept something, if I cannot appreciate it, how can I really inquire into what it wants to tell me or what is possible even though I am sad or there's pain or there's whatever. Um, so the moment I can accept and appreciate what is, there's just more possibility to look at what does it maybe want to tell me? What do I want to learn from it? And what's the next step that I want to take? Mm -hmm. And in a way we've been sharing that as well. Um, yeah, so thank you for that. I'm gonna remove, read to you for a moment and please, as said, feel free to ask another question once uh, uh, other people have asked theirs and I'm gonna invite Claire in and I'm gonna leave the room as well, so. Yes, I had uh, the privilege to have a chat with, jo sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, Joop. Perfect, Joop, Joop. Joop, Joop, sorry. Uh, so, um, I'm just curious about uh, because that's something I'm interested in is, is imagination. First, what is imagination? As I don't see it as a as a fantasy, but whatever. And what's the role of imagination, if any, in appreciative inquiry? I think imagination and creativity play a big role in appreciative inquiry. Um, and actually that's, it's part of the process, uh, trying to be creative and imaginative. I mean, um, and why, why do I say that? It's, it, and, and we actually practice that. We, there is a program at, um, at Champlain College, which I, I teach as well. It's the foundations uh, of appreciative inquiry. And I guess we, we understand the process of sharing our best story and trying to build on that, um, create prototypes, provocative uh, statements and things like that. Um, 
But what I guess one one of the things I sense we have often forgotten, if you can say that, um, is that we, we are born as creative beings. I mean, when I just look at at any young child, um, and they find and create things that I could not think of. Just a very basic example. Uh, I have a granddaughter and a grandson, and uh, they came to visit me on the boat the other day. Now, I'm living on a 43-foot sailboat, which is not that big, and it has lots of little cupboards. And the one thing I'd never thought of is that when you're a small child, you can, this is the perfect place to play hide and seek. Because they can, they are so small, they can crawl into these small cupboards. And they had a ball, not because of the boat, but because of the fact that they could play hide and seek in a place that was new to them. And they, they, they could just go and play hide and seek everywhere. As an adult, unfortunately, I have kind of unlearned a lot of that creativity. And, and this imagination that, that we have and that I still believe the inner child has. So appreciative inquiry is actually inviting us in the second and the third step. So if, if you take it as, a, as an approach, so that then, then you have the discovery, so you share the best stories you have. But normally we kind of extrapolate and we just think of what we have done and, and we um, do more of that. That's also one of the instructions sometimes in appreciative inquiry. But what would happen if you, and this is what we do at, at, um, at, at Champlain as well, what happens if you give even a group of adults, you just give them three or four boxes full of clothes, of toys, and they say, this is what you, you just imagine what it is you want to share with others and, and play with that. Um, I have been involving artists in my work with appreciative inquiry um, and just say, well, now imagine that you have to make a picture of whatever the stories have evoked in you. So dream big and, and create this beautiful image, this beautiful picture. Be creative. So I actually, I think that, that Appreciative inquiry is an invitation to use your imagination and to be more creative. And, and I've been trying to practice that. I'm, I can honestly confess that. I mean, I, as a child, I loved drawing. At one stage in my life, I thought maybe an art academy would be something for me. Uh, but my parents said, well, maybe not because you're never going to make a living that way, uh, which was probably the, the, the moral in the, in the, in the, in the 60s uh, of, of this 60s and 70s of, of the last age, the previous one. So, uh, but now when I, when I stopped being the CEO, I, um, I decided to start to dance. I'm taking singing classes. I started to film. And one of the things I really wanted to take on board is, is my, um, uh, my drawing and my painting stuff. And, and, um, uh, and I'm going to make my first painting on board. I can imagine that. And there's room for that creativity. I think that appreciative inquiry is an invitation to do that. I, I, I sometimes, well, sometimes, actually quite often, um, I just ask people to, to imagine and create whatever dream they can envision or prototype, prototype they want to build with just the things they can find in the surroundings. So, I mean, I, I would ask people, if, if I would organize something here, I would say there is sand, you can go to the beach, uh, you cannot destroy or destroy anything. Find what is there, straight, what it is that you think that needs to be shared. Needs 
to be shown and that you can create the prototype web. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great believer uh, of using imagination and creativity in the AI. And there uh, he was gone again. There you are again, you. Fantastic. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah I'm unmuted. But did, did, Claire, did I, did you get most of at least what I said? And I yes. had to be so creative yes. to simply disappear thanks. out of the screen. Yes, thanks for the... Does, does, yeah. does it make sense? Yes. I don't know what to say. Yes, it's creativity. <laughs> I, I am... I could go further, but I don't think it's it's uh, on the process of imagination. But I think it's beyond the scope of of uh, this this uh, conversation. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know because I'm not clear myself. It's just what is imagination? Is that, is that creating or is it accessing another world? Or is it something going in different level of consciousness or a different level of reality? Or is it something, I mean, it's not it's either not. or, but it, it's no. just inquiry it's, I am having myself. It's, it's, a, it's a both end, I would say. So it's, it's not an either or. This is the, the key in appreciative inquiry and social constructionism is that the, in, in essence, it's not an either or. It's always a both end. It's, this to me is, is, is one of the fundamentals of the process that, that you, and, and I guess some of the, the principles in AI, when, so when I can imagine traveling to Edinburgh next week, if I can imagine that as an image, I can start, actually start a, and transition and doing it by planning it and by going there. Yeah. But my imagination at first is really, um, is, is in a way where it starts. And, and in AI, we have this, what is called the anticipatory principle. So it's trying to, to imagine what is possible. And that imagination, that image, that will, if we are courageous enough, will lead to concrete action and, and make us take the next step. I think. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, dear Claire. Gonna yeah. Remove your pin video. And uh, I'm curious whether there are any more questions from Sami or Nadia. And if not, we know that Ritu has another one. Sami, yeah, wonderful. You thank you. Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity to host um, your with his expertise in uh, appreciative inquiry. And I had a discussion with Nadia earlier that my actually burning um, um, need to know if there is a very good case study, details case study where it's actually shown um, the process and the procedure of implementing appreciative inquiry with uh, outcome, clear outcome, or clear impact on the organization. A good example to follow I, I, up. I, uh, I, 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 what comes to mind, Sami, is how many do you want? Uh, uh, how many examples do you want? Because in the 20, what is it? Oh, well, it's more right now. It's almost 30 years um, that appreciative inquiry has been used by 
a variety of people that have great results um, in the way it's it it I guess it transform uh, organizations. Um, big examples, and here I'm talking about examples that that you where you talk about millions. Um, are for example, Green Mountain Coffee with Bob Stiller as a CEO, um, whereby Green Mountain Coffee really transformed its business by using appreciative inquiry. Um, it is one, uh, I'm thinking of my friend Rodrigo Lourdes in, in Brazil uh, with, with his, his canning industry that tra he transformed his business. Um, I'm thinking of, I mean, I can also take personal examples. Um, I used to be the uh, one of the uh, board members at Sintegra in the Netherlands, and we transformed a, trans a, a traditional classroom training organization uh, in actually in, in about three years, three, yeah, three, four years into becoming uh, a player that is, was considered at the time one of the biggest e-learning players in Europe and anyways winning the, the largest e-learning order. Um, and, and it was because of the use of appreciative inquiry uh, that, that helped transform. Um, I, I became the CEO of Van Hatte and Linksma, which was a consultancy organization with some 200 people in the Netherlands. Um, and it was laws making. Uh, I was the seventh CEO. And the only condition I had when I joined them was that they should allow me to use appreciative inquiry. And um, within three years, um, we became uh, one of the top three players in great place to work in our business. We uh, went from a loss making company to a company that had a healthy return on, on investment. Um, so we're making a profit again and we were contributing to society in different ways. That, that was one of the objectives as well. Uh, I always say with this last example that sometimes appreciative inquiry comes with a price. Uh, in this case, uh, with, with Van Hart and Linksma, um, it interested uh, buyers and who bought it and wanted them to go back to the traditional way of doing business. Um, but there is, there, there are um, really, there, there are so many examples. And if you, if you would like some, uh, like Hunter Douglas is one, I'm thinking of uh, uh, Clark Industries in, in, in the US uh, who went from a, um, from, from a, a pesticide company to really reframe the model and and became a successful organization which is now looking uh, much more after public health and so because that is one of the key things it's what is the change what is the major change you want to drive um, and and I'm still working with organizations I mean I'm I'm uh, and this is then a personal story I'm I actually had a request yesterday from uh, a master's study on innovation from a university in Barcelona asking me to be the chair of a committee. And the reason they ask is they say, this appreciative inquiry apparently drives a different attitude uh, from a boardroom perspective and helps to bring about the change. Because I, I, I guess, um, when I mentioned Green Mountain Coffee or when I mentioned Rodrigo or when I mentioned uh, Lyle Clark, they, they're all working in the, in the traditional world of businesses. So it's not that all of a sudden we become, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, fairies floating in the air. Uh, we still have to deliver. And, and that actually went for me with uh, Sintegra, it went with BT, it went with uh, Van Hart and Linksma. Um, and I, but I still believe even in the profit for profit sector that um, it's, it, it, it requires this appreciation and it, re and it requires 
that we look from a perspective, I would say, of balance, um, harmony, when you drive business. So so the reason why I left Van Hart and Linksburg was because I believed, always believed, and I think that's the same goes for Green Mountain Coffee uh, and for many of the others, is that we believe that there sh should be like a word that comes up, profit, optimization or business optimization not maximization there is a that, that that is a i would say a distinct thing you 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 focus on on the on the balance so i mean in in like in our conversation if i were to facilitate that i i would really make sure that we all get the floor um and as, as vera is doing and um or get the opportunity to ask and, and, and engage in the conversation. This is one of the key things when it comes to leadership. And, um, um, and, and with the people that I mentioned, who, who are either executives or owners or CEOs, they take that responsibility, but understand that it's the collective intelligence that will really bring forward the knowledge of what needs to be done uh, if you want to drive business successfully. But yes, there are, um, if you send me a, a, a mail or whatever, I can send you several cases. There are actually, by the way, um, many books. Uh, one of the, I think one of the most famous in this respect is uh, Change at the Speed of Imagination by Bernard Moore and, uh, and the late Jane Watkins. And it contains a lot of business cases. Um, Diana Whitney has written several books um, on, on, on business cases, successful business cases using appreciative inquiry. It's a long an answer, but I hope it, it makes the case. Yes, uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's really been a pleasure to uh, hear from you. And I will uh, find uh, your profile in LinkedIn and connect with you shortly. My pleasure. My uh, pleasure. I just wonder, regarding the e-learning, uh, Candy, what's the name of this uh, portal, the biggest e-learning portal? Well, it was, it was at the time, I mean, this was a success in, in, 2000, um, in 2003, this when we won this order. Um, and uh, at the time, the, 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 the portal we created was Texilla. Uh, um, I think um, I, I don't even think it's in existence anymore. Uh, but the inter the interesting thing, maybe one thing to mention here, is that this was a traditional classroom training uh, organization, and it was part of British Telecom. Was great in networks, training people, educate people in education. There was a lot of knowledge and passion about learning, and I guess what they found rather than struggle to keep the, the classroom business open was what might happen, talking about imagination, what might happen if you combine the passion for learning and education with the, 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 the availability of fantastic networks that BT had, because Integra was part of BT. And, um, and, and people started from that imagination, started to play with the idea and actually Texilla is a is a, is an ancient Persian city on the Silk Road, and it was the center of knowledge. And one of the people came up with that name. Um, and then we knew at the time that the British uh, MOD, the, the, the military Ministry of Defense, was looking for um, ways to make sure that learning could take place anywhere, anytime, and. Um, and because of the passion and because of the imagination and the possibilities we saw, and of course, the traditional account management at the different layers, we, um, in 2003, got uh, a 10-year assignment, which I always still I still find stunning. There apparently was so much trust. We got, we got a 10-year assignment, which was later, by the way, uh, extended um, to, to start developing and rolling out e-learning for the MOD. Uh, 
All right. Interesting. Interesting, actually, because we you are talking about 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We know yeah. that a bit earlier, just before COVID, so many organizations actually sus suspicious and not actually uh, relying on their own uh, e-learning platform with the in-house e-learning plat platform. But definitely post-COVID, um, even the most um, traditional government being forced to make all of their uh, mainstream education online. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's so, uh, you've been very um, pioneering 20 years ago and you you developed this successful yeah, e, e portal. That, that actually yeah. amazed me a lot. Yeah, you have been I guess, a pioneer in many, many ways. And I'm going to briefly kind of put in myself here because it's five minutes to seven. So we have for the official part about five minutes to go. And I don't want to stop it. So if you want to stay here and ask many more questions into Joop's stomach, as we say in a German proverb, um, you are very welcome to stay and continue the conversation. But uh, I also want to honor those who will have to leave at seven o'clock uh, Central European time. And before they do, I'm going to do a tiny little bit of announcements. So here we go. Um, this is the second. Can I, can I interrupt you here for a second? Just a tiny second. I, I just wanted to check and make sure that, um, and I know she can speak for herself. She has always done so, as far as I know, that Nadia is okay as well, because I heard all the others uh, asking questions and and and, uh, and as said, I just wanted to put my money where my mouth is, which is very appropriate when it comes to that. <laughs> so, uh, to, to make sure that I had all the voices in the room heard. Oh, thank you, Yub. That is too kind. You know, actually, I would love to, in the next session, maybe to build on, on Sami's question. I think for people who have not run bigger AI processes with any client, I believe it would be really wonderful if you went into it in some detail and, and literally walk us through an example of one of your clients of where did you start? What were the first conversations? Yeah. How did you onboard the relevant people? Then how was it rolled out, right? So to yeah. give us, because I know there are case studies out there, but to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak, would be would be great. I'd I'd love to do that, and I and and, and uh, we could use the case. Well, we could use whatever case uh, we want, but I can imagine that as as I was really part of it, uh, with all its struggles and all its challenges, uh, with the Integra case, where I was hired actually to as 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 I shared. Well, I I, I some, may have shared it with some of you, but I was hired to fix, sell, or kill the unit, uh, the division. Uh, and then uh, uh, this came out. So, so, and and it was not always an easy ride. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I think you hear that. You know the the what worked, what didn't work, the trials and tribulations. That would be fantastic. Yeah. So I look forward to hearing more about that. Is Good. Noted, dear Nadia, is noted. Very yeah. much. All thank right. You. Thank you. And also thank you, Sami, for your question. And please, if you feel well, uh, if you feel inclined and do have the time to stay, please continue the conversation just as with Ritu and, and Claire, if you want to. But for now, I'm gonna uh, share a few announcements with you. So first one is there's the next AMA call and Nadia has just wonderfully built the bridge for us for that. The next AMA call is at the 1st of August at the same time. So from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, Central European time uh, online via Zoom. This is the link to register if you have not yet. And uh, just so you know, the AMA calls from September on probably have to, uh, somebody was saying something, no? All right, later again, probably it was your background. Um, so the AMA calls in September have to be on a different date because I have another meeting which is regularly coming up on Tuesday evenings, but we'll find a solution, I'm quite sure. And I'm going to keep you posted if you like to on LinkedIn. And if I have your registration here, I'm also going to um, share with you the new via email. So this is the first announcement. 
The second one is um, an invitation to you. Um, if you have anything that you would like to be shared in the follow-up email in terms of events that you are hosting, uh, please either post them here underneath in the chat the link to your event or send me a, a mail at vera at dare to imagine dot today. Um, then I'm going to, if you're going to send it until tomorrow morning at eight o'clock Central European time, I'm going to take it into the follow-up mail. So everyone who has been registering and we're actually, there were more people registered for tonight than those who were showing up then this is spread, the word is spread. And uh, I actually was thinking about you, Nadia, and your AMA calls, but there's no one right now coming up, are they? There is one, and actually it's very close to you guys, one, uh, because it's on August 2nd with Peter Koenig. I'll send okay. you the thing. Okay, so that's good to know. Great, we'll uh, take that into this one as well. I guess I find it on LinkedIn, is that right? I'll yeah. send it. Perfect, thank you. And uh, and then a little announcement in uh, for another um, for another event that you and I are going to host. It's a local event in person in Dresden, where I am right now. Uh, it's called Inflow. It's in German language, but we already have one person who has shared interested who is uh, not a German speaker. So we might do it in both languages if there are more people showing up who want to participate and who are non-German speakers. And it's basically for people who are involved in regenerative practices and that can be both in the ecological way. So working with nature, producing food, working on the land, etc., or in the social realm being a uh, coach, being a trainer, being in HR and healthcare, whatever. So uh, in that form, it can be as well. And we are basically um, looking at, are you in flow with your own vision, the idea with which you started your initiative, or which is kind of taking you, burning inside of you to for you to take action? Are you in, in alignment with that? And also, are you also in alignment with the money that is flowing to you and from you, which is very much um, connected to a practice that I learned from Nadia, by the way. So um, the money and source work. So uh, if you're interested in that, and if you happen to be in August in Dresden or want to travel to Dresden, then this is the link for you in the chat. And another one, um, if you're interested in conferences and really interesting people, like a really great community, you really want to note this date, uh, which is uh, the 5th to 7th of October, again in Dresden, where I'm going to host the Salon event for the love and business community and uh, cool projects here in Dresden that I want to highlight and give the floor to. So this has been the little advertisement block. It's already two past seven. I'm very much aware of that. So for those of you who have to leave, Thank you very much for showing up and for being here tonight with us and for sharing all your great questions and examples and inspiring also us. And thank you, you. And uh, for anyone else who wants to stay, please stay. And on my behalf, thank you, Ritu, Claire, Sami, and I just, Nadia. It's really wonderful that you showed up and, and gave me the honor. I feel the gratitude. For you being here and for you Vera for hosting this and facilitating this You're thank you welcome I'm gonna remove mine as well so um is there anyone who has another question <laughs> no then then I would like to to express my sincere thanks to you, Vera, for hosting this event. And I'm actually being lucky to uh, manage to attend it at a very short notes. Thank you very much as well. I appreciate the contribution of uh, Job, and hopefully this will actually be a start of long relationship to actually gain from your expertise. My pleasure, my pleasure and my joy to share. Yeah, so, thank indeed. you.
Look and wonderful that you can could come like last minute. I mean, I you, sure. you just showed up. Thank you me. very much. Take You're care. Welcome. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Ritu has gone as well. Well, well done, dear you.